In this video, we're going to be looking at extension methods in C Sharp. And you've probably come across these even if you're not familiar with what the term is. As the name suggests, extension methods allow us to extend different classes. So that means that even if we don't own the class, it's defined by someone else, or even if it's an interface, we're able to add new functionality onto that without modifying the base interface or base class that we're interested in. Now, before I jump over to the code, just a quick reminder to check that pinned comment for a link to my free newsletter and my courses on Dome Train. With that said, let's check out the code. So as I mentioned, extension methods allow us to add new functionality onto other things that we don't necessarily own. And the way that we're able to do that is by using static classes with another special keyword called this. And by combining the two things, we can add new functionality onto other things. But I want to start by explaining that extension methods are really what we call syntactic sugar, just to make things look like they belong to something else, when in reality, they don't. Because we don't own the other interface or class that we're interested in extending, we're technically not adding new functionality in to that interface or class, but the way that the IDE and the code looks makes it appear that we can do that. So I'm going to start by explaining the inverse of what's actually happening, and then we can see how the syntax ends up looking afterward, and why it makes it nice and readable for us to work with. I'm going to start by making a new static class here, and I'm going to call it string extensions. And what we'll be doing is adding new functionality onto the string type. But like I said, I'm going to start by showing you what's actually happening. If we start by adding a new static method onto here, and I'm just going to make it return a string type, but this isn't really what's required. I'm going to take in another string. And this is not going to be an extension method, but it will be afterwards once we go through this. And I'm just going to give it a name called Nick's cool method. You can name it whatever you want. But we have to decide what we want our method to do. And that's not really important for this example, because I'll follow up with another one right after that demonstrates the value. Maybe we could just make this method reverse the string that we pass in. So a naive way that we can do this is that we can use link to go get all the characters from the string, reverse them with the link method called reverse. Then we have an, an I enumerable of characters and I'll put that to an array and return a new string created from those characters. So instead of Nick's cool method, we could just call it reverse string. And the way that we would use this is pretty simple, right? We know that if we have a static class and I go use it up here, we could go call reverse string. So with this code at the top, we can go reverse the string called hello world. And like I said, we're just calling a static class with a static method passing in a string. Then I'm going to print the result of that string to the console. And the result is not really readable, but you get the idea. This is hello world backwards. Now, what does this have to do with extension methods? Well, we just created a static method that operates on a string and an extension method is going to do the exact same thing, but change the order that we call things. It's functionally identical though. So let's see how that looks. The way that we would call this instead of having the static class string extensions, then reverse string is that what we're able to do is take the string itself and get rid of the static class entirely. So we would call hello world and then say reverse string. You can see that the way that this reads is very interesting. We're able to take any string we want and reverse it. That's pretty powerful in terms of how it looks because it makes it seem that reverse string is built onto any string that we have. But you can see that Visual Studio is saying, hey man, that doesn't exist. You can't call this. But the way that we trick it into making it think that is by using extension methods. And like I said, there's another special keyword that we'll use called this. And if we add this onto the method that we have reverse string and we put this string, so this is going to make it such that this parameter here, this first one string input is the one that we're operating on with the extension method. You can see that line one now does compile. Visual Studio now sees reverse string as an extension method. Even if I hover over it, you can see that it has an extension method. Uh, it says extension in the parentheses, right? So Visual Studio now sees this as a method that's available to us on strings. And it doesn't matter what this class is called. Now. I could type this here and you can see that still reverse string is going to work. It doesn't care about the static class name that we have here. And the requirements that we need to have an extension method are a static class. We need to be able to have static on the method. And then this keyword out the front of the parameter that we want to be able to add the extension method onto. So reverse string is kind of boring. And I mean, we have the option to do that with two lines of 
code. Making it into one is kind of a little bit better, but what about something more useful? I have another example here of the HTTP context if you're making ASP.NET Core web applications. And if we wanted to get the base URL of the HTTP context that we're dealing with in our web application, we could go build an extension method just like this to get the base URL. And you can see the three things that are required, static class, static method, and this keyword out the front. And that means that if we have an HTTP context, we could now call get base URL. And then inside of here, I just have all of this extra code kind of written out onto separate lines, but you can see that we end up creating a URL and then returning it back up to the caller. And that means that if we had something like an HTTP context that we were dealing with, right now I don't actually have access to one, so it's not going to work. But what we could do is say our context, and then we could ask for the base URL from that. And this is is an extension method. Again, if I highlight over it, you can see that Visual Studio was saying extension in parentheses. And just a reminder, right, that this method is not technically added onto the class. It just makes it look like that in Visual Studio for us. It's quite literally the same as being able to pass in an HTTP context into this method called get base URL. And to prove it, I can still call this static class with get base URL in our context. So I'm still able to do this, right? Like you can see that this is the extension method syntax, but this is still allowing us to call it as a static class and a static method. So both of these options still exist even when we have this format here. And that's just a super quick tutorial on how you can make your own extension methods in C Sharp. If you're familiar with link and all of the different powerful things we get with that, those are extension methods on the I enumerable type. And if you're interested in seeing more about how that works, you can check out this video next. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.